Ryan with Mist Geek here, and today we're going to build a QRP Labs 10 meter bandpass filter. And let's get started. It's going to be real easy. The first thing we're going to do is look at the manual. So let's take a quick look at that. So the number one thing is parts identification, and the manual shows by markings which parts we need. So for the 10 meter filter, C1 is marked 560, C2 and 3 are marked 151, and C4 is also marked 560. We need L L1 and L3 need to be 10 turns. L2 needs to be 11 turns. So that will be easy. I'm just going to leave this on screen for reference and get turning. And these are, I believe, well, I don't believe. I'm going to check. And according to my very bad eyesight for seeing these little tiny things, um, you're going to, going to double magnify this one here. You see there are five, six, or one, five, one, and it's five, six, zero. Oh. Okay, so these are the five, six, Ds. Now the one, five, ones appear to be missing from this. Um, so I've got to find, go through my stash and find some of those because I know I have them. Um, yeah, I know I have them. I, I know I've got some somewhere. So uh, I was, I'm a little bit surprised that they're missing. Um, now, I don't remember opening this before. It is possible that I opened this and lost them. <laughs> that has happened in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and find some 151s here, which is uh, 50, 150, 150 picofair, I believe. Um, so yeah, let's go meet me go find a couple of one five ones and come back. All right, so you're gonna want a fairly clean uh, work work area here uh, so that you can uh, get an idea. Let me erase this here. It's for something else for the previous video. And uh, after taking a look at the manual, make sure that we have everything we need. Now, uh, the manual mentions four capacitors. However, I'm only seeing two. All right, so I found a couple of 151s uh, actually from a 40 meter bandpass kit that I had that I just don't need. Um, I can always, I mean, I, I don't need it, so I'm not too upset. So I've got my 151s, I've got my 560s, and now it's time to follow, follow the directions and put these in the place that they go. So the C1 and C4 are the 560s. So what I'm gonna do to make this easy on myself, is I'm just going to take a piece of paper and put it on right here on my bench. Ignore this. And I've got my, my 151s here, which are C2 and C3. And I've got my 560s, which are C1 and C4. There we go. And the instructions say capacitors first, and then toroid, and then uh, these pin headers, um, and then the toroids. So let's go ahead and pop these in. So, um, C2 and C3 are these ones in the middle. So what I do is I pop them in and then flay them out just a little bit. If you really wanna be good to yourself, put the writing on the outside so that you can see it later. So you make sure you, if you have problems, you can make sure you used the correct parts. So you can put, the, put that on the facing outward.
We need three toroids, and according to the manual, they should be 10 and 11 turns. So L1 and L2 are 10 turns, and L3 is 11. So L3 goes in the middle. I'm sorry, no. L2 goes in the middle, and it is 11 turns. So we're going to wind L2 first and install it, and then we know what we need to do for the other two. So first you got to untangle this mess. And then I, I just, once you get the peanut shape, just stick your fingers in and pull. And then fold the ends over. It's just gonna be harder to see, but fold them over and then pull them to the end. And you've got thirds. Which is more easily said than done. Cut, and now we have three equal links. So if we look at the directions or at the schematic, it says that uh, L1 or L2 rather, the one in the middle, the one with 11 turns that we're gonna do first uh, it's going to solder in, let's see, let me find something to point with. It's going to solder in um, here and here. Not here. That's for this one. It's L1 goes here and here. So the L2 goes here and then here. So we're going to want to do a right hand for the first one. So when I say right hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend about that much. I'm going to stick it in. And see, is this the way I want to go? No, I'm doing it the wrong direction here. Uh, there we go. No. I want it. I want this one to land there. Yeah, that's that's right. So I want that one to land there. So we're gonna it's gonna land there eventually. So we're gonna pull. That's one turn. And there's two. And just give it a little pull right there. If you give that that little pull, it'll stay fairly tight which was what you want, three. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to actually count these real quick because I am known for not being able to count. It's definitely something I'm not great at. And yes, my hand is totally going numb. And that sound you hear is me wringing my wrist <laughs> because my hands go numb from doing this. Although I do enjoy it. The, this, not the hands going numb. All right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this one also goes through, which is 11. I'm gonna double check that from the other direction. So what um, I can do is pop this in here and we'll just count them. So if it goes through, it's a turn. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And this still goes through. So if we count it like this, we just count the count the ones on the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so we got eleven turns. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, what you can do at this point is put put the uh, um, you put it through. Oh, I almost forgot. Got to get the uh, got to get the pin headers installed. Do that real quick. This will only take a moment. So I just put them on my little tester that I built prior to having the PH2 LB uh, part test fixture. And I'm just going to use this for light more than anything. And get these pin headers. Those boards dissipate a lot of heat, so you gotta get it really nice and hot. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to tin. Now, the instructions say at this point to put it in the, put the, the uh, toroid in the you know put the inductor in the board, but and then uh, just get it nice and hot. I'm not going to do that. Um, it does work, but if you're nervous about getting the board overheated, then what you can do is get your uh, continuity tester ready and grab some solder. Turn your gun your iron as hot as it'll go. And then I'm gonna pick a spot right here and about right here. And so I'm just waiting for my, my iron to heat up a little bit. And just oops, do the solder blob thing. Yeah. And you can see the, and smell the enamel uh, burning right off. And so it's tinned. That's good. And then we'll do the other side. We'll tin it in about the same spot. In fact, I probably could have gone a bit closer there. So I'm gonna go in some. So that's nice and tinned, and we can just do that to get rid of it. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And I can definitely smell that enamel coming off. All right, and then just make sure we have continuity. We do. So now, cut these leads. And we're gonna pop it in the board. So here, and there. Get that in in the frame actually, so right there and right there. You can see this one I actually did a little bit on the long side, so I can just pop it up a little bit. That's no big deal. And throw it in here. There we go. Cause, and it goes so easy because they're pre-tinned. You don't have to worry about overheating the board or anything. And now I just need to do that two more times. And guys, the worst case scenario here is that if I did this wrong, let me pull it in here so you can see. Um, if I had done this wrong, all I'd have to do is just 
rewind it. It's it's not that big of a deal. And if I want this to sit down a little bit better, I just, just push this down. No big deal. So now I've got to do this two more times for L2 and L3, or uh, rather L1 and L3. And so um, I'll do that and we'll come back and then we'll put it on the tester. It's done. Um, now we got to see if it works. So I went ahead and soldered it in. Uh, they're all right-handed. I call it right-handed. So I soldered them all in right-handed. And when this works, uh, it's all done and I'm sure it works. I'm just going to smear this in hot glue so that they don't jiggle around. Uh, just a thing I like to do. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my nano VNA so that the the filter range is, or the uh, scanning range is um, up to 40 megahertz. Oops. So we'll start at one megahertz and go to 40. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay. And so um, it should drop off here about 30 megahertz. And it's a little bit high, I suppose. Um, there's like an almost no insertion loss up to about 33. So it might be a little bit high. I could probably tweak one of these here. Yeah, just all I'm doing is I'm pinching these a little bit to bring the bring that a little bit lower. So now it starts dipping at 28. We don't really want that. Let me spread this back out here. Oh yeah, there we go. So the middle one, uh, C or L2 rather, pinching that a little bit. Um, and you can see the filter. I'm just taking these windings and squishing them together here. And that has changed the shape favorably. So now once we hit 30 megahertz, the insertion loss picks up big time and it drops off. In fact, let's go out, let's change to, let's put our starting at 20 megahertz and our stop at 50 megahertz. Yeah, so we can see a sharp decline there. So, um, yeah, and really we're worried about company cutting out harmonics and stuff. So at 10 megahertz, the next harmonic isn't going to be until quite a bit higher. So if we go all the way up to 45 megahertz, um, yeah, we're way down in the, in the weeds now, 30 dB. So I'm not sure what the specification is supposed to be, but I'm sure it's uh, good enough. So anyway, so that's the building and the testing of the, uh, Carapy Labs, uh, 10 meter bandpass filter using PH2LB's uh, tester and the now VNA H4. So I'll put links to all these things below so you can have a look. And I hope this video is informative to you. If you'd like to see more of this content of this type, please hit like uh, and subscribe for me. That lets me know what you like. Thanks so much. See you next time.